In this video, we're going to show you one simple formula to help you find the area of rectangles, squares, a rhombus, and parallelograms. Also, we're going to talk about different ways you can model this, and at the very end, a special bonus Cheese It lesson. Coming up next. Hi, this is Todd. Welcome to the Land of Math. On this channel, we'll give different tips, advice, and strategies to help you help kids with math. So, without any further ado, let's get right to the show. If you've ever Googled area of a shape, you're going to see a lot of possibilities. There's length times width for rectangles, side squared for squares, um, base times height, or you can multiply the diagonals and divide by 2 for a rhombus, and for a parallelogram, you use base times height. All of these are correct, but which is the best one? Base times height is the one that we're going to go with. Why base times height? The reason all four of these shapes are actually parallelograms. You might say prove it. To be a parallelogram, we have four sides. They're all straight. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are also the same length. And finally, opposite angles are the same. If we look at these three shapes right here, the square, rhombus, and rectangle, each of them have four sides. Each of the sides are straight lines. The opposite sides are the same length. The opposite sides are also parallel with each other. And when we look at the angles, the opposite angles of all these shapes are the same. Now, in the rhombus and the square, they actually happen to be 90 degrees. We can use this grid to model finding the area of different shapes. For example, the square has a base of 4 centimeters, a height of 4 centimeters. If we take our base of 4 times our height of 4, we're going to get an area of the 16 centimeters squared. Why 16 centimeters squared? If you count up, there's a total of 16 squares inside of the square. Each of these little squares would be 1 centimeter wide, 1 centimeter tall. The same thing with the rectangle. Trying to find the area of this, we'd find the base, which happens to be 5 centimeters. The height of this happens to be 2 centimeters. So we would take our base of 5 centimeters times our height of 2 centimeters, and we end up with 10 centimeters squared. And we end up with 10 little squares, each one 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter. The same formula of base times height is also going to work when we talk about this rhombus. This rhombus right here has a base of 5 centimeters, has a height of 4 centimeters. If we take our base of 5 times our height of 4, we get 20 centimeters squared. And finally, this is also going to work when we use parallelograms. We can use base times height with, with this one as well. So this one has a base of 4, I'm sorry, it has a base of 8 centimeters. It has a height of 4 centimeters. So if we take our base of 8 times our height of 4 centimeters, we're going to get 32 centimeters squared. You might ask yourself, is length times width the same as base times height? And the answer is basically yes. It depends on your perspective. If we look down at this rectangle, we'd have a length and a width. But if we turn this rectangle vertically, we'd have a base and a height. The length and base are the same. The width and the height are basically the same. So let's say you're trying to find an easy, fun way to kind of model finding the area of a square or a rectangle. Cheez-Its are an easy way to do it. This square has a base of 4 and a height of 4. So once we fill in all our Cheez-Its, we have a total of 16 Cheez-Its, or like 16 centimeters squared. If we had a rectangle that, in this example, has a base of 5 and a height of 3, we could take our 5 times our 3, and we're going to get 15 Cheez-Its, or if this was in centimeters, 15 centimeters square. Let's say you have a rhombus or parallelogram and you want to model it. It's hard with a Cheez-It, but with a grid you can. Cut where the height is, rearrange the piece to form a rectangle. Here you have a base of 10, height of 8. With this parallelogram, same thing. Cut where the height is. Now you have a base of 10, height of 3. So it's easy to see it's 30 centimeters squared. Another way to model this is to kind of reverse engineer it. Give the students the cheeses or blocks at the beginning and have them create different rectangles. So for example, I like to use the number like 12 because it's easy to divide. Create different rectangles like 6 by 2, 4 by 3, or even 12 by 1. It's real quick and easy to do. 
Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you next time on The Land of Math. The show's over. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. We'll see you next time.